sometimes I think what men do wrong mm-hmm. is they take women and make them one person. Right. Like every woman is vindictive. Right. Every woman's gonna do this. Right. Every woman's gonna do that. When right. that's not the case. That's not true. Yeah. And that's my and that's, that's one true. of my pushbacks. Right. I'm not saying these women are angels. I'm right. but I'm not saying they're devils. I'm saying right. there's a spectrum in between. Right. And my biggest thing with so many men right. is that they want to paint women to be right. one person right. when it's like there's a lot of different kinds of girls. Right. Uh it's the same, A-Walt? The, when you see the red pill try to paint uh women one way. That just comes from the hypergamy nature, and that's and that's in all women. That now that is an, an, in all women. At some point in her, it's hypergamy. You can have a girl that generally love you, right? Generally love you, and but if you fall on hard times, if you stay on hard times long enough, I'm talking about nothing about you changes. You're gonna lose that woman. Now I'm not saying she's gonna be gone tomorrow, but let's just say you go through a let's say you go through a rough patch for a year, and it can't happen. I don't been through it. God yeah. knows I have. Yeah. Is a, is a, you probably gonna you probably gonna lose that woman. Now let's say you meet a woman while you broke and she likes you. You know what? You better be working on something. She'll go with that. I met women while I broke, but you better damn well be working on something, improving yourself. If you think a woman finna sit there with you forever, making fifteen dollars an hour, she'll build with you if you're working on something. But I'm telling you that love is gonna run thin. Uh, from from what I've seen with women, uh, at some point hypergamy uh, kicks in. Now, do you have different personalities and all that type of stuff? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But from my life experiences, at some point, hypergamy always comes in. And and a lot of guys don't want to face that fact. But that is, that's from my life experience and what I've seen. The fact that most divorces in due to money should prove that fact alone. So, I like where you're going, AMS. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And to me, (laughs) He's got to accept it. I somewhat agree to the hypergamy point. Mm-hmm. And and to me, it's a human nature, female nature conversation. Right, right. We <laughs> all know get me, that what? women value these things. Mm-hmm. And to uh, me, uh, uh, the uh, uh, myth uh, uh. is that love is unconditional. Uh, that's a fairy tale myth. That's a fairy tale myth. What I realized is love is conditional on both sides. Right, 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 right. It should be, right? Mm-hmm. If, if, if you helped me out, AMS, right. and you saw I was lazy, and right. I wasn't growing my YouTube channel, right. and, I was, and I was, you know, doing disrespectful things about you, saying disrespe- disrespectful things about you behind your back, right. would you be here right now? Right. No, because right. there's a condition. Right. Because I put in the work, because right. I'm listening to you, because I'm respectful to you, because right. I'm doing X, Y, and Z for you, right. therefore, you're gonna come back on the show. Right. So me, when it comes to women, Dudes want to live in this fairy tale land where it's like, no matter what, I want a woman, no matter what I do, she's with me. I'm like, bro, that's stupid. Yes, yes. There's, there's nowhere in the right. life besides maybe your mom. Right. Because even dad is like, you ain't my son if you do that. And, and one last thing before I let you do it, mm-hmm. but it's the same as men. Right. If you're with a girl mm-hmm. and she was fit, that mm-hmm. she gained 100 pounds, right. you still with her? Right. Hell no, you throw it at the AMS and throw it the side of the road. Right, exactly. And so to me, yeah, except your married to her now and uh there's a lot of uh down downstream effects from from doing that but Dude, let's that was I, brilliant yeah. sorry did you see that like yeah it's not like this and ams is like yeah it's like this he goes okay so it's like this but <laughs> <laughs> no it's like this okay <laughs> i agree with that but a man like you and i we're on our purpose 24 7. we're always growing that's who we are and so that's why i think that conversation might be, um, it's true, but for a certain kind of guys, it doesn't apply to because no matter if I lost all my money, I'm always gonna be grinding, hungry, building it back up because this is the mentality and, and mindset that I currently have. Right, and the point is with the red pill and hypergamy, the reason it, 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 it stings so bad is because I think women kind of understand at early age, boys are very sexual, whatever. Men don't understand that at a very early age about women, all women. We kind of saw the gold diggers in high school and yeah. they, only, they, had, they only dealt with the dope boys and stuff like that. We all saw that. Yeah. Well, you always think it's different. Well, I saw some pain behind women. that smile. You just think, okay, those, yeah. those gold digging helpers, yeah. but these are, the, these are the good girls. And then you find out too that, damn, she's hypergamous too, just on a different level. And mm-hmm. so that's where the, the resentment towards uh, female nature comes in because guys don't know that part of it and that, and this is another thing about um, the difference in why it's an issue. The the money is external, the the body is you, right? So the money, for all intents and purposes, no matter what you do, you could just fall, right? You could just go through a rough patch. You could figure it out, but you might not figure it out in two months. It might take you a minute. So let's hypothetically say 
you lost everything today. The IRS said, Joker, we found out you owe us $12 million. Give us everything. Now, I do believe you will build, but will your woman stick around long enough for you to rebuild that? Because it's not going to be no overnight. See, mm-hmm. you did not get there from a year's worth of work. It's taking. See, what he's trying to explain to Hafiz in so many words is guys get zeroed out. <laughs> mm-hmm. You could just simply go, hey, you know what? You should read this part, this uh, chapter in uh, what was it, book four <laughs> called Zeroed Out. Maybe that would probably help you out a little bit more. Um, because that's essentially what he's talking about. And I, I, I do agree with AMS. I, he's been really, he's at least he's on top of his game and, and he's trying to express this in terms of like that, that Hafiz can understand. But <laughs> that's really what's not yeah, working. It's really tough, right? But I'm not gonna it, lie though. I was like, I don't ever like when brands call themselves alpha on that, but I'm kind of like he switched on. I got to yeah, give him some well, credit. Yeah, this has been. A, he's been. He's been really. I think he's a little bit more. Um, uh, sure. learned. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. he's he reads the stuff. He sticks around with. It's not just like I'm just gonna go and make the the uh, the most um, outrageous channel I possibly can. He's been around. He's. I think he's been around longer than Kevin Samuels has. Um, but he, uh, and now he's fine. He went on fresh and fit. He starts, he's beginning to, to make the rounds and I'd really like to get him on this show actually. Um, but again, trying to explain the red pill to a guy like Hafiz from this perspective, like, and you're right. Hafiz has no other choice, but to nod his head and go, wait a minute. Yeah. Yeah. I guess you're right. You know, like, even though if I was on there and said the same thing, he'd been all of my ass. Right. Yeah. But if, if, if AMS is sitting across from him, then suddenly you like, or it's because AMS has the audience he wants. Well, yeah. That's true. But it's also like, it's the Andrew Tate effect, right? Ruslan and, and the rest of these guys are more, you know, the, the quote unquote red pill moralists, those guys, they love them some Tate because Tate's on top of his game right now and you can't avoid him and he's making a lot of money. So therefore he must be right. And so therefore they're like, oh, not, they, they'll disagree with me. The same words could come out of Tate's mouth. They come out of my mouth and they'll tell me I'm the devil himself. And then when it comes out of Tate, they'll be like, well, you know, yeah, I think maybe you're right. You know, same thing Such with a flimsy with worldview, how quickly it switches, huh? Yeah, it it falls it fall it's a house of cards, man. It just falls apart as soon as they do that. And then what kills me is how fluidly they just go. Hmm. Yeah, it it goes from this to this <laughs> very very quickly. So uh, let me keep going here. This is this is a really years. So would a woman be willing to go through that whole grind again for you to rebuild? Because sometimes when we get to the top and we making money, we forget them. I've been grinding for ten years, yeah. and we just think like if I just snap my fingers. That no, it's so easy. that's that's the issue that I do believe you will rebuild. But how long will your woman stick around? Why you rebuild? And I think to me, there's a spectrum, mm-hmm. right? Oh, mm-hmm. just dance I around love that, that answer. Video that you, you made that video way back in the mm-hmm. day mm-hmm. because your point was, you're not saying that they're gonna leave tomorrow, right? Like AMS, right. like oh, you deleted my channel. Did all the girls packing up their right? Are oh, they leaving the house? Right. You're not saying that, no, right? No. But it gets to a point where. If you haven't gotten back to where you are at, right? Potentially, she is going to leave. Not potentially. Not yeah. And he said, <laughs> not and I said <laughs> she's going to leave. She's going to leave. And so, yeah, so yeah, not potentially. Thank you. This is why I like AMS because he just puts a freaking period at the end of that sentence for him. Mm-hmm. Because it's like, here's what gets me right. They're talking about getting zeroed out, and I've done it on this show. I've done it in my books. I've done it in essays. I have, I have, I have banged the gong about male suicide for a very long time. And right? he's smart because he does it without jargon too. So he puts right. it in plain language. There's no exactly. misunderstanding. Exactly. And this is why I like. I love me some AMS because it's like no, and it's you. You look at the. You look at the divorce for to suicide statistics for guys today. That's why this is fucking important. That's why guys like Hafiz need to be taken to the fucking woodshed over this stuff because you're talking about guys' lives at this point, right? Oh, well, you know, these guys think that all women are evil and all women are like this and blah, 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 blah. Okay, well, you can you can point that out. Maybe that's maybe you, can, you might have a case for guys in the black pill, the Doomer community. But the red pill reality of this is that when guys get zeroed out, that's when you get deaths of despair, you get mm-hmm. suicides of despair and it is very trackable. You can, and if it, by the way, if it were women who were the ones killing themselves at yeah, anywhere between three and a half to five times the rate of men, trust me, there'd be a full month dedicated to, you know, women's suicide awareness month guaranteed. So mm-hmm. when, we, when we're talking about this kind of stuff, this 
by the way, this is why I people say, why do you debate Russo? Why do you why do you even give two shits about Hafiz? Why do you give in two fairness? Shits that is me asking you why you do this. <laughs> yeah, you do. Yeah, and I, I regret it every time. How come you won't <laughs> debate Alex from playing with fire? Because it distracts from fucking important shit like this. That's why, right? I don't want people to like go, oh well, Rolo said this or said that, and now um, that's that's the gospel because some you know you know retard says you know that you know that's what I said to boost their channel, when in fact what I'm saying is absolutely different from what they're talking about because I'm trying to help guys like keep the noose off their their necks or like a gun out of their mouths, right? Mm -hmm. So when I'm if, if I get like heated because of this, that's why. It's not because I think they're actually trying to kill these dudes. They don't. They don't realize what they're talking about. They're trying to just try to turn a buck. They're trying to get more eyes on the screen, more subs, more whatever. You know, more engagement. Meanwhile, we're having conversations like this, and I'm glad AMS is checking this guy because if he doesn't, then guys go, "Well, I don't want to. I don't know about that red pill stuff. Uh, I'll. I'll just you know hope for the best, and and I'm you know getting zeroed out, and I'm going through a divorce. I lost my kids." Uh, I mean, you look at the 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 reasons why guys commit suicide. It's exactly, I mean, because they get zeroed out. Now, is it because of a woman? I'm not saying it is. I'm just saying that because they get to a point where they have to rebuild, they're faced with a question. That's, do I have the energy and the effort and the perseverance to uh, build myself over again from scratch, even though I've lost everything? Or do I just delete myself? Unfortunately, most guys delete themselves. And you know what? Yeah. No one cares. No one gives two shits about those guys when they do. Oh, dude, how many stories? I don't know if you remember this. There was tons of stories back in the day from this where guys would uh, zero themselves out. One guy, uh, he was from the married red pill. He's like, my brother had this zeroing out moment. He offed himself in the house that he got kicked out of in front of the wife. And the wife just used that to milk sympathy from everybody else. When he yeah. literally walked up and said, you did this to me. Yes. You're, she you're, still came out ahead of it. Exactly. Your catalyst of whatever it is you did that prompted his suicide. Now you're using it mm -hmm. for your own for your own sympathy and your own benefit. That's yeah. that was that, him trying to hold that bitch accountable. Yeah. Well, so I, I in a way, I understand where, where Hafiz is coming from with this, because it's like there I've written several essays about how hypergamy is not a straight jacket. Right. And. If you're going to say that, oh, this is what the red pill says, that all women are alike, right? No, no, it's not. And if you're mischaracterizing it like that, they're not going to find it and say, you know what? Maybe I can use this knowledge to change my life because I've been zeroed out. And AMS is actually trying to ch check him on this, which I think is pretty good. So uh, let me get this guy up. coming on that thing dressed like a pool table. What the hell's Damn. wrong? With what <laughs> I've said is that there is a spectrum between that, right? Okay. okay. Some girls, it may be. Three months, right? Some girls, it may be three years, right? Right, right. There's a spectrum, right? Because end of the day, nobody is gonna, no human being for the most part, right? Maybe may, there might be some women, right? Who for the cannot who, commit to saying are, are anything, gonna suffer with somebody forever, right? There's not many people besides your family is gonna do that. It's not the money per se. It's not the money. The money is the underlying root. It's the stress. The lack of money causes now it's tension and we're having petty arguments, but the underlying factor is the money, the financial stress that we're not doing that and we're struggling to pay bills, this and another, that causes little petty arguments. And now, so the woman doesn't necessarily look and say, oh, the money's gone, he's not rebuilding. It's now I'm stressed about money, so now I'm picking at him, what that bag's doing there, why this is not up, why this is not clean. I this agree. And now we're having petty arguments. So what the way I look at it is this. I look at it like, what did she sign up for and mm -hmm. what did you sign up for? Right. Nah. Me? So you're admitting then that uh, women marry a lifestyle and they don't marry a guy. Mm. Right. Would that be accurate, Hafiz? Because I've said that a million times. It's a times. spectrum, Rolo. Some girls would say, but maybe and then North. Uh, maybe I'm in the natural world and not in the metaphysical world. Like maybe we need to find them. We need to find a way to get to the metaphysical world, Ryan, so we can help help us understand this. It's just crazy <laughs> watching him work out his marketing plan in real time and then change it on the fly like that. That takes real mm -hmm. skill. Yeah, yeah, real skill. Let's say a man said, "I signed up for you to have sex, right? Be kind, right? And to be supportive, right? Right, right." She said, "I signed up for you to protect." provide and lead right so i look at it like whenever one party right. drops the ball right now it's like i bought this car and now the car broke down right. yes 
but only one party is protected by the state. <laughs> yeah. Only one party gets to enforce that they are their terms, and the See, other the car party is like licking ice cream. Get to enforce those terms. <laughs> these bitches keep driving all these cars to the ice cream store to lick ice cream, and it's just God not fair. It, you know? Yeah, exactly. Here, here's the deal: you're not supposed to think about that guy who's been licking your ice cream for so long. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> so that's when you're like, bro, I'm not gonna drive it no more. Why right. am I gonna drive this broke that car? So for if you're a guy, mm -hmm. let's say AMS mm -hmm. got four girls. Mm -hmm. All these are, are his chicks. He's having a good time. Mm -hmm. One of them is like, well, you know what? I don't want to have sex anymore. Right. You got with her right. to have a sexual partner. Right. Now she no longer, no longer wants to do her job. So yeah. what's going to happen is at, at the period of time, she's going to go. So right. I look at it like if you are a guy right. and you can, I don't believe, I don't believe, this is my opinion. I don't believe you or me or any guy who's really about it will ever be without for long. Right. I believe I can take every penny away from you That's true. right now. And I believe in two months, three months, you're going to have something enough back. Right. Because of how your mindset is. Right. So I right. believe that if you are a guy and you stop doing that job, mm -hmm. best believe she's going to leave. Right. Um, the, 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 the thing with the women and you keep saying. Uh yeah, except that the marriage contract that you are in and you are very promotional about, it does not ensure that on your side of the bargain there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I get it. So not all women are like that, but they are, but it's on a spectrum and sometimes they will and sometimes they won't, but it depends on the timeline because you have a car and ice cream, but sometimes they will, but not all women are like that. What I'm trying to say is, <laughs> fuck, is that that's a choice. So if a woman uh, gains weight, that's a choice. If a woman don't want to have sex with you, that's a choice. If for whatever reason, YouTube, uh, your business or something come, say your health, whatever the case may be, to where it's out of your control. Like Hafiz is busting his ass, but you know how business it is, man. Things happen, yeah. uh, YouTube blacklist you, whatever the case may be, right? And, and things slow down, right? Your business, you got a the staffing agency and you lose a contract, a major contract and your income drops exponentially and but that's out of your health control yeah. the weight loss and sex that's why it's, it's different with the, the, the sex and the weight loss because that's a decision you're making to handle things with the money aspect i'm a big ceo i'm not big ceo i'm a i'm a, I'm a um I, i'm a big guy i work at a cubicle job make 125 grand a year i get laid off i might can't just go out and, and and just replace that job in two or three months I'll probably replace it and i probably but I might just can't go back out and replace that salary right now. I might have to go work for 75 for a while. I need that woman that even though I can't afford those trips no more, I need you to work with me. And from what I've seen is when there's a downgrade in lifestyle from the woman, there's an issue. That's I, all I'm saying. I, I, I see it. To me, I, I, I think see he does. it when the lifestyle is the culture that's set. Okay. So if you're a guy and you met her so making a million mm -hmm. and you were flying her out on the private jets mm -hmm. and you were buying her the, the purses and Oh, and it's your fault you got laid off because you said her expectations too high. I get sudden, it. I get it. Mm -hmm. That lifestyle goes away. Mm -hmm. Now the main reason she was there was because of the lifestyle. Going back oh, to the deal. That's totally different. No, that's, <laughs> totally different. <laughs> that's totally different. I'm explaining. Because now this is a, a, a <laughs> transactional relationship. I'm not, right. I'm not saying that AMS. Okay. What I'm saying is that like you said, there's a certain level of provision as a man okay. that women like. Okay. Some women want fifty thousand dollars worth of provision. Okay. Some women want two hundred thousand. Some okay. women want a million. What, whatever you show her. Hafiz, answer this question: What do women really want? You know what the answer is? More. Yeah. <laughs> it's always more. <laughs> Her and agree to it. Mm -hmm. It's just part of human nature. Right, right. The moment if you promise, if you promise her this middle class life, mm -hmm. but then now all of a sudden you want to be a thirty thousand dollars a year janitor. Right. You promise <laughs> one thing. You and wanted to be laid else. off. And so in that situation, I'm saying. Oh, I agree. Now I agree with that. And that's and, and that's my and my point is that the losing the job isn't the choice. You're hundred percent right. It's not the choice. But I truly, but I I I cannot because I've seen it happen in many of my my families my friends families i cannot see a man who loses his job mm -hmm. and he's a really ambitious driven purposeful man mm -hmm. i don't see that man be unemployed for six months i see oh. that like my my, my dad would always say mm -hmm. if if things if i didn't have a job i would be out 18 hours a day looking for job. i wouldn't even come home until i find a job can you pause this guy for a sec dude <laughs>
Uh, I don't even have to go that far back. 2008, how many guys that did great jobs in construction just got decimated and those jobs mm -hmm. never came back? How many of those guys committed suicide? Let's even go a little further. What about NAFTA in the softwood lumber industry in Canada? I watched my town get decimated. There was no jobs to return to. It didn't matter how ambitious you were and the angels rolled in with cocaine. How about mm -hmm. a little further back? The rust bucket or the rust belt. What happened when those manufacturing jobs went shipped off to Mexico and to China and all those guys lost their jobs, even though they were really good and ambitious and they never came back? This guy, <laughs> how old is he? He's got to be like 20 or something. Is, no, no. Hafiz is like 31, 30. Dude, 30. he's old enough to know fucking better. He might be older. He might be 32 now. But he's he old enough to know married better. Like last year, I think. And he is like, he's very, he was very proudly like, you know, uh, I, I know he got laid at some point, but he's very, <laughs> you know, withholding sex. And, Benefit and, and of the yeah, doubt on that one. <laughs> yeah. I mean, some people are saying he was a virgin until he's like 29. I don't know for sure that that's the case. People have sent me videos about like sort of his background and everything. Well, if he's a virgin, why isn't he smarter? Don't they study when they're not getting laid? I know, right? Where does all that energy go? You don't even have to go back as far as 2007. All I have to do is show you the studies that, and you don't even have to get laid off. You can have the same, maintain the same job and your wife gets a promotion at work and she makes more money than you oh, and she gets yeah. into a higher status position. You're probably going to get divorced. It's not that those are, that's the numbers. I, I just work here, man. I'm sorry yeah. to bring you well, back. When you make your relationship dependent on your paycheck, then yeah, you live and die by the paycheck. Yes. And that's weird because that's so out of your control. You're absolutely right. Okay. Show you. I have all the, I have all the Twitter research I can show. I like it. You want data sets? I can give you data sets for that. When a, a couple is making the same or like, especially if the guy is making more and then suddenly the woman makes more money and she gets a promotion and she's out there. She's like, she's going to be deferring to the authority of guys who are like high powered executives all day. And she's supposed to come home and defer to your authority, even though you make probably like, you know, $50,000 less than she does now. That's going to change your relationship dynamics because that's how women work. Uh, it only does. Fun. If you make the economic factor, the, the method of dominance in the relationship. Good example. My best mm -hmm. buddy guy I sailed with he earns good. His wife, dominates that twice as much as him and he's in the six figure range mm -hmm. never had any issues at home because he doesn't make the paycheck the reason that he's the dominant right. one in the relationship mm -hmm. he does all those i want a man stuff he's got that shit down yeah yeah i was gonna say there are way like the reason why here's my this is me talking this is my theory and this is my opinion the reason why women when they make more money that it, it precipitates divorce is because most men's marriages are based on the transaction they're yeah. based on that that dynamic like the guy who makes the most money the, whoever makes the most money in the uh in the family makes the rules and it's and not just you that is red pill mm -hmm. ian ironwood praxeology the dominant male a great article he describes exactly that that mindset because mm -hmm. a lot of people were thinking this oh you just want your women barefoot and pregnant in the home it's like no most homes are two income families, 40% of women out earn their men. This is a trend that's not going away. And so how do you deal with it? So we know that yes, male dominant relationships are the ones that tend to last and that tend to be the best. So we're mm -hmm. going to stick with that. So what do you do when she earns more money? Disregard economic input. Yeah. As soon as money she comes through there, the only thing that matters is yeah. you as a man and her as a woman. Money muscles and game. And when she makes more money than you, you've got to emphasize another part of that, right? Of that mm -hmm. trifecta right there. And by the way, there's synergies between all three of those. Oh, so yeah. when, uh, the, and you're exactly right now, here's, I'll, I'll tell you why I, I follow that is because I have known guys when I, when I lived up in Tahoe, when I lived up in, in Northern California, like there's all these guys who would get with girlfriends. Like they, the joke was this, right? What do you call, right. um, what do you call a, um, a, a snowboarder without a girlfriend homeless? <laughs> because what would what was going on at that time was that, like these guys would be lifties or they'd be like snowboarders or like transient workforce that would go through Tahoe for like the snow for the ski seasons and everything and they would find a girlfriend and the girls made way more money than the lifties did or the guys who are just you know want to be professional snowboarders or whatever or a musician you could say the same thing about me what do you call a, a, a bass player without a girlfriend homeless hall oh, oh. you know the, the same it's the same the same thing but the the reason why it's funny is because women who have who make a lot of money way more than the guy there has to be something that offsets the fact that the guy does not he doesn't have he doesn't have status unless he's a rock star right he's an up and coming rock star um doesn't have the money but he's got to be hot okay like that, that girl's not going to get with like most of the time like women well, not just hot pre-selection too like status mm -hmm. 
Yes. Well, when you see when you see a, a hot chick or a, a sort of like a, a maybe a plain Jane chick, like a wallflower chick or a semi chubby chick, and he's she's with a hot guy, it's usually because the guy doesn't have that much money. It's so usually because he's broke. It's usually because he's a snowboarder, right? Or he's a musician, or a struggling musician. And he's with her because and for no other reason than the fact that he needs a fucking couch to sleep on or whatever else, right? And you'll see, you'll be like, well, why would that? And he's probably cheating on her anyways. And usually they'll put up with that shit, right? Because, because a man should well, cheat. Oh, no. No. Right. But the, the dynamic is this, is that he, he excels in muscles right in the physique side of things maybe the yeah. game side as well too but he is completely deficient in the money side she on the other hand has a good chunk of change and she doesn't need a man but she wants a man who does she want the hot snowboarder guy the guy that come and sleep with her and just you'll live with her and pretend that that he would be into her for any other reason right the ones that and, all of her friends would take from her in a heartbeat if she let him go yeah and so there's that 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 sort of paradox between like making a lot of money that having that aff affluence and status and everything else and when women get into long-term relationships you know they're definitely looking for the guy who has something that's above they're looking for the guy who's the six pack the six figure income six feet tall he's got to be interested you got to be uh provisioning protection and parental investment there's a lot the laundry list of things when it comes to that but in the meantime the homeless snowboarder as long as he's hot and he fucks real good and he lays down the dick right then, then she's okay with that because she's making more money than him so take it now let's let's extrapolate this into the into the marriage where they were both making the same amount or maybe he was making a little more and she gets a promotion she's making a lot more that guy if he doesn't if he wants to avoid divorce and if their relationship isn't founded on the transactional nature that guy needs to up the muscles and the uh, and the game side of it right there if he's not able to like sort of bring himself up so it's not even just like losing a job they could they that's what they're saying like, well you lose a job the clock is ticking that's like a chris rock routine no it's about right? your loss of what the other person values in the relationship yeah yeah so and especially if that relationship is felt like say for instance the the woman is like the girl like married cornell right mm -hmm. and cornell loses his job who's she going to be pining for after six months Guy at the petrol station, or she's going to be pining for somebody like that, because now what made him attractive, what made him a good long-term prospect, is gone, and she can make she can provide her own security. So, what is that girl going to be looking for? Is she going to be looking for another Cornell, or is she going to be looking for the hot guy in the foam cannon party? So, uh, I love Debbie. So switched on. Yeah, uh, let me. Uh, this is almost done. I want to see what else they're going to say right quick here. Now, find a job ain't the issue. I give you that. Um, you got to find the income. So like when I was working at the, um, the cone company, yeah. making the cones in Alabama, I got fired from that job. And all the jobs who I was went going up to the other jobs were paying like half of that. Yeah. So the point, I, I got another job, but I couldn't. So you might have a guy who's making 125, lose that job, and he go get a job making a 70. He's not a bum sitting on the couch playing video games, yeah. feeling sorry for himself. He wouldn't have got another job, but maybe he had an extraordinary job with an extraordinary salary, salary that he worked his way up for 10 years, and now you're at another company? You ain't fool. My question is, in your opinion, uh -huh. All, all feelings, no facts. We're all just guessing here. Right, right. If a guy <laughs> like that was making 120, he I loses a job and he's making 70, how many percent, percentage of women would you say are leaving him? Would you say it's all 100% of women would leave him with dropping from 120 to 70? Uh, oh, you're talking about how, in, what's, in what period of time? In a, let's say he... Because, okay, this is how ahead, it works. You had the social, s sexual market value place, right? Mm -hmm. That woman who's at 120, she got that 120 because that's what her sexual market value determines, right? Her sexual market value is higher than 70. If that's, if that's what she was at, she would have already had that. She got the 120 because that's what her sexual market value determined she got. Yeah. So if she go get with a guy that's now making 70, if you're talking about for a short period of time, fine. She's not, the, the, the arguments are not going to build up to leave in two or three months. But six months, seven months, you making that, and now it's a lifestyle grade when she knows, hey, my sexual market value determines that I get 120. I've always gotten 120, and I'm not taking a back seat because I got guys who are hitting on me now, and they make 120 and more. So why would I take that back seat for the 70? And so what the issue is, that woman's sexual market value determines what she feels like she's the, entitled to. And so that's the issue. If she got 120 from you, then she probably in her head feel like, oh, and that's a big downgrade in lifestyle because that $50,000 that's a lot of experiences in traveling that go up in that 50. So yeah. our lifestyle is going to take a big hit. And, and in my opinion, I think it goes back to the man and the discernment. Mm -hmm. if, if you, because I don't, I don't believe things are just that simple. There's mm -hmm. like, 
we we make it it's about money but there's more than just money right, right? there's there's so many layers to what oh absolutely Dude, listen it's absolutely that's what i'm saying so a it, guy who makes nothing could take take that woman from you if he catch her in the right headspace and he makes 30. And so and, that, and that's what I'm so saying. yeah, that's a lot of variables so, in so there. That's yeah. what I'm saying. There's so many variables. So yes. guys, guys make it where it's only money. No. If I go from 100 to 90, she left me. It's not as a thing you said about oh, you can't no. use metaphors. The only reason right. she's with you right. is because of money. Right. She can go from 100 to 70. Right. But if she's with you for deeper reasons besides the money, right. and, and, and she really mean? sees you as an ambitious, driven, right. passionate guy, right. she knows even she knows you're not happy making 60. She knows right. that. She knows you want to get back to 120 right, more than right, she does. Right, right. And so to me, I think what happens is you as a man got to know who you are and you got to know who that woman is. Because I really believe a lot of men, when they get down, they stay down. There we go. All right. That's enough of that. Thank you very much, Hafiz. Now, I hate that pool table of a man. Oh, he's yeah. killing me. But here, okay. So here's the thing is you'll notice that. And I mean, AMS was working with what he had. But you'll notice that Hafiz makes it all about the beta buck side of hypergamy. Yeah. Right. It's all well, about until it put him in a corner. Then he started making up ethereal yeah, mindset yeah. Well, crap. Well, it's, about, it's about deeper things than just money. Yeah. Like uh, alpha fucks that. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> and you don't want to talk about that. And that's the biggest problem I have with guys like Hafiz and, and even Jordan Peterson and the rest of these guys is uh, I would even put uh, Dr. David Buss in the same thing. They only want to talk about long-term relationships they only want to talk about you know family formation they only want to talk about financial you know responsibilities of the guy to take care of the family they only want to talk about one side of hypergamy they only want to talk about beta bucks provisioning protection and parental investment and they think that premises the is all they want to talk about that hypergamy is only defined by beta bucks right by that side it's like no it's also defined by alpha fucks Tammy yeah, MS even tried to meet him on that level and he still Peterson, dances in there. Tammy Peterson lived with another dude for two years. So let's talk about Alpha Fucks too, okay? Like there's a reason why she decided to marry Jordan right after she got out of the relationship with the guy that she'd been with for two years. Time. Yeah, here for the audience too, there's an easy way to understand this. Just think of luxury goods, right? I use soya beans. I love it because they own soy. Soya beans are what, like two dollars a ton? They're like a commodity. They're a dime yeah. a dozen, they're everywhere. Girls can get them, you can get them. There's soy. no value to them whatsoever. But you get edamame beans, which are just soya beans, but they sprinkle some salt and soya sauce on them. They charge 10 bucks a plate. Now people like it. It's like a flex. It's a good thing. Instead of soya beans, think of that as like an al analogy for men. If you're just the guy with the job, you're just the soya beans. You're a dime a dozen. There's always another guy in 120,000, whatever. But you're branded well. Oh, your friends would love to go out and get all my edamame beans. I can't believe you can go out for dinner on a Tuesday. It's a social flex. It's like a... Oh, the branding thing is good. It's like you said, everybody's a brand now. They're the Louis Vuitton shoes. They're the Louboutins. They're the purse. That's kind of where guys are at now. If money's no longer the thing, you have to become a luxury good. And yeah. most guys don't want to be a luxury good because that takes effort. And it mm -hmm. takes you changing the way you think about things. And people would rather just bitch about women. They don't want to pay the game. Table jacket. I'm going to exit the game. Well, why, why do you want to do that? Because you can't. Yeah. Play the game. yeah. Because you don't want to. That's play. the worst part is that they could. How many black, uh, with the exception of DDJ, every one of these black pill doomer types that you kind of find, you're like, dude, three months of working out, you'd be fine and wear a better shirt. Up. Yeah. You got to change your mind about yourself before you do that, though. You got to yeah. believe it's actually even possible. And that's really where most of those guys are at. But like when I see like that, people say, oh, you need to debate this guy or debate that guy, whatever. <laughs> like when I, whenever I'm yeah. looking at like, whenever I look at Hafiz, I'm like, you know, what would the conversation even be? Because it'd probably be like, oh, we're going to put Roll Tomasi on trial. Whereas it's like, no, I would want to talk about exactly why it is that you refuse to acknowledge that women have this alpha fuck side of hypergamy and they want to get with the hot guy in the foam cannon party and they, they break rules for alphas and they make rules for betas and you are the beta that she made rules for. Cornell is the beta that that chick made the rules for and the guy that she saw in the freaking petrol station was the guy that yeah. broke the rules that he was the alpha that she would break rules for. And why would you debate that guy? It's like he's like, Worse than an RSD live stream where you can talk for an hour and say nothing. Like, I don't got time to argue that. What do you even say? What do you even no. say? You didn't no. say anything to argue. It, was, it wasn't even wrong. It can't be wrong. Yeah. It's unfalsifiable well, gobbledygook. It's unfalsifiable. Yeah, you know, it's funny you should say that. Let me, uh, let me throw hey. these up. Where did it go? Um, logical fallacies. Let's have a look. <laughs> I Holy got this Reddit, look at the now. list. 
Yes. Yes. I love these. Uh, what is that? Is it begging the question? Circular argument, which can, can include the premise. Uh, no, but uh, this is my favorite one, by the way, is uh, to quote, to quote, okay, I didn't even know there's a word for this. Avoiding having to engage with criticism by turning it back on the accuser, answering criticism with criticism. That's pretty much what every hater of the Red I was going to say. Does. That's that. I call the, that the Rolo fallacy. <laughs> <laughs> well, when we when uh, the reason why I brought that up is because we were we were looking at the the uh, unbearable triteness of hating, and we're going through the seventeen different kinds of hate, right? All of those pretty much coincide with uh, these logical fallacies, right here. <laughs> like every last, even straw manning was one of those was one of those forms of hate, right? So they're just you're, it's it's not that they're haters; they're just bad debaters. They have no idea that you know what a logical fallacy is. Well, it's just sport. It's that postmodern thing. They don't want to argue. They don't want to debate. They don't want to learn ideas. They just want to have a, a little fist fight in the mud to see that they're a better person than you. So that way they can have the audience and then they can get paid. Because it's about beliefs. Yeah. Literally wearing a guy's uh, desire to be better than he is as a skin suit in order to make money. It's really right. tasteless. It really is. And I know it's weird to hear me talk about guys on the red pill being tasteless, but they are. Well, yeah, I mean, th th and that's the thing is, I think a lot of people think that we have some sort of like, you know, ideological purity and we, we don't, cr we don't punch left and we don't criticize our own. It's like bullshit. I criticize yeah. my own all the time. In fact, I get in a try my ass into trouble for doing that. I haven't seen you wear a hat yet that I haven't made fun of. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Well, I, mean, I don't own a MAGA hat yet, so and I will wear it. I promise not to wear it in the shower. <laughs> Get one of them uh, "Make Women Great Again" hats. That'd be awesome. Just yeah, the irony of it. Yeah, yeah. The pink one or the red one. Uh, <laughs> uh, let me finish these out here real quick. Uh, D amazing. All your books absolutely changing my or changed my life. Rollo, thank you. Quick question: Are women only looking for beta traits while pregnant? Hmm. Amplified. Hugely amplified. Yeah, the guys figured that when they ran dread on their pregnant wives and like the littlest bit of it, mm -hmm. complete blowout moment. Yeah, they're yeah. on security alert. Their hormones are whacked. they're nesting. They're in the nesting yeah. phase. Yeah, the, and, and so I would I would agree. Yeah, in the nesting phase for sure.